Shall we get recording, eh? So today we have Tarsonis playing as a Lord Commissar here, and he's going to be facing on Caldaris Desert the mech boy of Fathom. Fathom, Fathom, Fathom. Fathom known, ironically, for some rather unfathomable plays in prior casts, so we'll see if he's going to repeat that. So we got a Sentinel moving in here from Tarsonis as his first option. Always better to buy your Sentinel as your first pick. And get your second Guardsman after if you do want double Guardsman and a single Sentinel because it will reduce your upkeep burden. Fathom in contrast being a little bit strange. Only going for a single shooter in tandem with his starting slugger. Risky, to be honest, given a Lord Commissar. Lord Commissar plus a Sentinel can put a lot of pressure on. Right now, the Sentinel's really not doing a whole lot. It's incurred a lot of damage, and yes, it doesn't bleed, but the thing is, you've got to spend time now repairing it with your Guardsmen. And there's a good potential that while that's happening, those Guardsmen aren't going to be achieving anything. And right now, this is terrible. Those Guardsmen just need to retreat. I don't know what they're doing. Yeah, they needed to retreat a long time ago, and now they're going to be in base healing for a bit. Should just retreated before that. You don't want to be bleeding the Garsmen, certainly before they can get their Sergeant. And Tarsoni is only just getting the Sergeant now, the uh, Guardsman now, because he decided to get the Sergeant early, which is very, very strange. This is a weird game. This is, Just get ready for some madness, guys. I can already foresee that we're going to get some madness. So he's going to use one of those Guardsmen to get some repairs on the Sentinel, and he's going to send the, the other one out to catch that requisition, which should be his natural. We'll meet Sluggers. Kind of nice sending the Sluggers down here, because if the Guardsmen are trying to use the Garrison, you've got the Burners as an option to flush them out. Painboy for Fathom against IG as your first pick is super weird, and to be honest, a terrible idea. I mean, it's just a, a, a very weak melee unit individually okay it doesn't bleed fine but like i said ig are already putting on a lot of early game pressure tarsonis really needs to get his lord commissar involved in the action here he is a huge part of the early pressure against the the orcs and really he should be hunting the shooters constantly Let's see if he notices the flank from the slug onto the guardsman here so tarsonis is messing up in that regard but generally, IG should have a pretty nice advantage prior to the Orcs getting all of their upgrades on their boys. So, you would typically see a fast looter. The other thing is, generally, the best unit in the tier 1 of the IG is what? What do you think the best unit in tier 1 of IG is? Just generally, broadly, the most effective. Most cost effective against the, the widest array of units in the widest array of applications. Kadosh and Devils, of course. So... You go for a pain boy, and you are just justifying the IG getting Kaddish and Devils, because the pain boy is a melee unit, which the Kaddish and Devils counter, and he best supports melee units, which the Kaddish and Devils counter. So it's a strange one, really. It justifies going Kaddish and Devils into spotters, and then just base locking with maybe a last turret push. Just winning the game in tier 1, but Tarsonis is a little bit torpid. If you didn't know, torpid generally means lethargic and slow. It's kind of like torpor. Someone who is suffering from torpor could be described as being torpid. Tarsonis needs to to get a grip, get a little bit more aggressive. See, he's getting the spotters now because he sees the looters, but it's a bit delayed. And he's had this sentinel running around for ages, messing around, getting shot at by shooters. Now we've got a war. So yeah, they are riled up, these green skins. They're getting that speed boost and that damage boost. And of course, you've got the mech boy who can teleport after you. And they're 50% far on the moves so and often too huge here. Getting some repairs down. At least he's got the Commissar here for the fight now, which is helpful. And yeah, with the spotters in the field, the looters don't really have much to do here. They can try setting up and bait out a, a shell, but the Commissar's just going to get into melee again. Tasson is just a little bit slow in his micro. But he gets the combination down, and then the shooters are just bleeding. Now the sluggers are just hanging around for no reason. They really don't want to be going into melee with the Commissar here. They're just going to bleed. They're not going to win the fight with the supporting fire of spotters and sentinel. 
yeah, they should just retreat instantly. You only lost a single slugger, so not a huge loss there for Fathom. But it is something. If we look at Tarsonis, they've had their full three gens for a long time. Fathom only built the third gen a little bit sooner, so they're quite significantly behind in terms of power. I mean, their expenditure... Yeah, their expenditure is really high as well. You've got fully upgraded shooters here, which are 45, 50... Or is it even 20 uh, power for the burners? 15 or 20... 30 for the pain boy, 30 for the looters, 25 for the, the big shooter. I mean, this contrasts with 15 for stomp and 30 for spotters. <laughs> Quite a significant difference there. Though, you would have expected gens up earlier for Fathom because of the fact that he only led with two requisition units at the start of the game. So perhaps not as bad as it sounds with the power differential there because Fathom's income should have been a bit higher. But then again, Fathom got his final gen up there, so I don't know. Anyway, he's putting on a lot of pressure here with his Daka 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 and his fully upgraded shooter boys. Now they're taking out the Sentinel there. This is what the looters are meant to be doing though. They're meant to counter the Commissar when he inevitably runs in to tie up the shooters. But then that's what the spotters are for, right? However, yeah, Slugger's also intervening now. The, the, the uh, Lord Commissar's in a bit of trouble there. Needs to get out of there. And the Pinboy's managed to get into melee with the Guardsman. Pinboy running around solo like this is, is just really inefficient. His DPS output is very low compared to having something like another slugger boy squad and then you'd have two units which can roam both sides dealing with garrisons which you can see the guardsmen are conveniently using in the corner here but also threatening gen bashes it's quite easy if your opponent only has one flamer unit to mentally keep track of its location at all times and ensure that they don't sneak around the back and actually bash you gens if there's two though that can be a lot harder just something to consider there Tarsonis is already tier 2 and he's going to be going for the Ogryn squad. That's a bit of an odd choice. Clearly doesn't realise how far ahead he is in tech. I guess that's somewhat understandable given that he didn't actually get any gem bashes off. But against Orcs I would not be going for the Ogryns. It's strange. Ogryns are very, very resilient against shooter boys because shooter boys only do piercing and Ogryns are super heavy infantry which takes really negligible amounts of damage from piercing. But the problem is the real threat in tier 2 for the Orcs isn't any more the shooters. They don't actually get any stronger in tier 2 than the state that they're currently in in tier 1, other than levels. But the slugger boys, when they get their knob, especially with upgraded git source from the pain boy, could be very fearsome. And that actually could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the sluggers quite easily. Sorry, could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the ogrins quite easily. Especially if the ogrins do not save use your head for a melee fight, which is a common mistake that you'll see newer players do. They'll use the Use Your Ed ability on the Ogrins to just get a speed boost and to rush into melee with ranged units, but generally that's not the best application for it. You should use it prior to retreat to stop model losses in a melee brawl. If it's a melee fight that you can, that's pretty tight, then you use it at the start of the melee fight and it gives you two sources of knockback. It gives you one explosion of knockback as soon as you use it. And then about two or three seconds into it, it does another, like, burst. There's, there's a little animation. You see, like, a little white sort of wave come, come off underneath the Ogrins. It does another knockback. And that double knockback, guaranteed, in a melee fight, is pretty huge. Because it's basically loads of time where the enemy isn't doing any damage, but you're doing loads of damage to him. So those are the two applications you should use it. Or to hunt down vehicles because you're heavy melee, especially if you snared the vehicle with a melter, stormtrooper melter bomb, or a last cannon. But we don't see that often. And uh, that will mean it's wasted and it isn't present for then a brawl against slugger boys with a knob, and that would be a very bad situation. But we actually see double looters here. Kind of interesting. They'll be okay against the Ogrins. Obviously, the piercing damage, especially from distance, won't do a tremendous amount, but at least it will control them, and it will do some damage up close. Now, the knob isn't actually here yet, so this is probably a bad fight. You're actually seeing the secondary activation of the knockback there. Ogryn's focusing on the uh, pain boy right now. Can they get him? Ooh, no, they can't. I think the Ogryns need to get out of here now, because the slugger knob has arrived, and they've been too busy focusing on the pain boy. So they're low on HP. Lucky special there. Ogryn specials are so strong. They do really high damage. I can't. I feel like it's something like 65 damage or something. Now maybe that's just the bonehead. He has a stronger special, but it's a lot. It's one of the stronger specials out there on an infantry squad. This is really weird. I don't know what the heck Tassonis is doing. Generally, I always say as a rule of thumb, you don't want to go above four generators. That will nearly always result in having too much power. But the only exception to that would be if you 
don't expect to hold them, but then if you don't expect to hold them, I would really question why you're building them. Is it worth that spending that requisition investment, uh, Fathom? He didn't... He didn't reveal his looters. I feel like he could definitely have shot down the Commissar during that time. Commissar has now picked up the Power Sword and the Aura of Discipline. That's definitely going to help him beat the Pain Boy and Ogryn combo as long as he can keep his Lord Commissar around the Ogryns. We'll see whether he manages that or not. So a pretty huge heal for the Ogryns. I think it's something like 350%... Uh, sorry, percent. Whoa, that would be broken. 350 HP per proc, which is every... Every 10 seconds. Hmm. Pretty good. Though I feel like... I feel like that was a lot better before. I get confused between the patches. I know it was nerfed at some point. I don't know if it's nerfed in this one. I'm going to be nerfed in the next one. Or what the crack is. But it's still no doubt going to be very effective with the Ogrins. But you see, Tarsonis isn't doing that. He's keeping it near the Garsman. Which makes me question if he even realises how this works. A lot of new players as well will get this upgrade thinking, oh, I'll heal my Garsman with it. But the actual heal is just negligible because the heal gets worse the more models you are surrounded by. If you're near three spotters and the two Garsmen, you've now got over 30 models, so the actual percentage heal is going to be a lot, lot, lot lower. And it's a percentage heal, right? So healing Garsmen is pretty terrible. You'd want a flat heal against Garsmen since they have such low HP. Well, they don't have low HP. They actually have average HP, but yeah. You get the point. Way less HP compared to an Ogryn. So Fathom goes for a Death Dread. It's reasonable. He's got some Cyborg implants. He's going to be upgrading his Sluggers with something. Let's see if we can see what's going to happen here. Is he going to give it HP? Generally, you would go for speed, I think. But maybe he's going to go for HP. No. His HP didn't change. So he's either got speed or damage. Looks like damage. Because it doesn't appear that those Sluggers are outspeeding the Pain Boy. Nope, they seem to be moving at standard orc speed so must be damage he's gone for there so that'll be a bit scary you'll we'll have to retreat earlier from them of course there's no tell there's no way to know that they've got that upgrade so that is the power of going for damage you can throw off people's muscle memory now one thing that i've not spoke about yet tasonis is tremendously behind in vps should have a pretty good situation here against the Death Dread. Oh, not very much. He's walking his last cannon forward into melee. Oh, dear. But then again, Fathom's joining him, walking his mech boy and his shooters into melee, too. <laughs> Strange. And the looters... He's got a beamy looter. Wow, he got a beamy looter just to kill a, a sentinel with a missile launcher. Damn. That's nuts. See how this brawl goes. Ogryn's taking a lot of damage here from the Slugger Knob and the Death Dread, but the Death Dread wants to flee. Wow, all of the Sluggers killed. Versus only the Bonehead dying on the Ogryns. Hilarious. This infiltration play by Fathom, honestly, not working at all. I feel like it's hurting him more than anything. There's been several instances where his looters really should have been firing and it feels like he's just forgot to uninfiltrate them or maybe he thought he was making a sneaky play but it's really not pulled off. Played out? Pulled off? Yeah, I don't know. It's not worked for him. Tasson is going to tier 3 and Fathom going for a weird boy. This situation right now would be where it'd be really cool to have a Punisher Lehman Russ which if you're unfamiliar is to put it in layman's terms, like a Gatling gun, Lehman Russ. It's like an assault cannon on a Lehman Russ. I, to be honest, I'm not even sure... Well, the weapon's just called a Punisher cannon, right? I was going to say I'm not sure what the weapon's called. As far as I understand it, it's basically a stronger assault cannon. So the idea is you've got a tank that does a trick, just a crazy amount of focused piercing damage. Basically like the assault cannon Dreadnought, but on a tank, so it's even better because it's more mobile, but obviously it's tier 3. So it would be crap against other tanks. But if you look at Fathom's composition, of course, he's just mostly running around with a load of infantry. He does have that Death Dread, but you still have the underlinked Laz Cannon on your, your Lehman Russ. 
And, you know, he's got a heavy weapons team, he's got Ogrins, and he's got a missile scent. I think he's okay to kill a Death Dread. He needs to actually fucking set up his last cannon this time. See, this is a, um, a macro decision that's terrible here. He set up the last cannon, and he's got no one in front to scout for it. So by the time... So you can see the Death Dread's in range right now, but he can't see it. Because he's got no one scouting for it. And, and also, it's just so vulnerable. It's not even in proper cover. Should be in cover there, but you need units in front to scout and to protect it from just being attacked. What? He goes tier 3 and drops a bunker. I guess he's going for a medical bunker. Oh man, this micro is crazy. He's running into melee. He's got frag missiles loaded. He really needs the crack missiles in. So there we go. We got the... What's it called? Lead by example. But wow, a lot of damage coming into the Lord Commissar. He's got to get out of there. Really needs an armor upgrade, to be honest. He's not that durable right now. Micro of Tassone is going crazy. He's stomping on the floor. If he had crack missiles loaded, this Death Dread would probably already be dead. Where are the crack missiles? Chase after this Death Dread. No additional shot. Remember, another play that you can make with a heavy weapons team as the Commissar is execute it and you will do tremendous amounts of damage. You will do literally double the damage. I mean, you could have killed a Death Dread in three shots. Never mind with crack missiles weighing in and the heavy melee of the Ogrins. Ogrins, ironically, here doing very, very well. Let's do it. We're never going to catch the Death Dread with the last cannon here. This is a terrible idea. You could push into the base, but he's not going to. That's fair enough. So, Ogrins right now tanking beautifully. Really could do with that aura of discipline nearby. Okay, they need to retreat now because they're going to bleed another model. If that weird boy hits him again, it's going to be really painful. Retreat, man! Ugh. Lucky it only got one of them. Oh, that was the Bonehead again! Oh my god. Keeps killing the damn Bonehead. But they are doing well. I don't know why he went tier 3 and dropped the bunker. That's really quite crazy. Foot of Gore. Oh, great, Photo Gork. Kind of wasted. Photo Gork generally always will not kill things because a competent opponent will just retreat out of it. But the point is that it forces retreats because if they don't, they get wrecked. You can also use it to one-shot the bunker, I believe. So that would have been a better play. But, you know, you suppress the enemy double guardsmen with your looters so they can't manually dodge, and then you foot of Gork and it forces a retreat on both of them. Obviously, if they've got Commissars, though, they can then just execute and come back in. They've actually got Bulgrins. Wow. Bulgrins are interesting. They are, if they can get levels, a straight upgrade against Ogrins, but by default, they're not. They're actually worse against melee due to the lack of use your head. So they have more HP than default Ogrins, and you can see they're immune to basic knockback as well. But they... The lack of use your head definitely does hurt in melee fights with when they're at a point before getting levels. In contrast, the reason for them is that they are massive tanks, especially to ranged fire due to their slab shields. They passively take reduced damage against ranged. And yeah, he's, he's overcommitted them, expecting them to be superheroes. But they haven't got their levels yet. And they had no support. Fighting essentially a whole army. Sentinel really could have gone in there and stomped those sluggers. And that would have made things quite different. Needs to get some repairs going on. Where is the stomp? Oh god. Really late on the stomp. <laughs> now he's going to die to the looters. Please uninfiltrate your looters, Fathom. Fathom. They're not shooting because he's trying to infiltrate them. Thank god. He right clicked the Sentinel in time. Death Dread Sink killing a Garsman. <laughs> a massive waste of time. When his burners could be killing dozens of them. And that's kind of probably get another shot in, but not enough to take out the Death Dread. Oh god, it might get another shot in here. Wow. Ooh, really close. 13 HP on the Death Dread. Damn. But Tassonis is out of VPs. He actually executes it. What the fuck? He executed the Heavy Weapons team and then retreats. Um... Yeah, I don't know. Crazy game. Tasson is obviously a newer player. A lot of macro mistakes. I hope you can see this game and see the macro mistakes. One thing I noticed, there was basically nothing going on this whole game down this side of the map, and that's a big failure of Tarsonis. Should have been sending a unit down this side of the map in general. Quite difficult when you've got double Guardsmen, and he did opt for fully upgrading those Guardsmen. I would question why that was necessary. Generally, the Guardsmen are most effective in Tier 2 out shooting the Shooter Boys. 
especially with the Commissar, they end up being just way more cost effective. But the, the, the primary threats here weren't the Shooter Boys. You had Looters, you had the Pain Boy and Sluggers, and then Weird Boy. All of which, Garsmen aren't really a good counter to. So I wouldn't have been invested in those Garsmen. I'd have kept one of them, just as a Sergeant, and just keep sending him down this way to cap the map. However, an alternative would have been if he had invested in a different build. He could have had Kadashans, and he could have sent the Kadashans down this way. Or he could have used Kadashans in his main army, still using just a Sar Sergeant Guardsman down this side of the map to cap. But then the Kadashans would have been able to provide him with additional knockback potential in those main fights, which would have been really helpful to deal with those sluggers. In general, I think the Lord Commissar was highly underused. At this point in the game, he definitely should have had a armor. There was a massive lead here in tech and it was kind of what i was referencing with the punisher lehman russ if you get tier three before your opponent and you're able to employ an anti-infantry tank generally you can just bleed them so hard with the range dps output of that vehicle that they'll be stuck in tier two forever and then they'll, they'll just they'll get wrecked you do the one two so with ig you'd get a lehman russ you keep it You'd give it the Executioner, you'd, do, you'd bleed looters and tank busters and lords. You still do tremendous amounts of DPS to a Death Dread, and then you get Caskins afterwards. And there is nothing a Tier 2 Orc can do against that combo, but instead he rushed Tier 3, dropped a bunker, which didn't really need. He wasn't even particularly successful at holding ground. And really, uh, another thing, if it was a high-level game, like if I was Fathom, as soon as he drops that bunker, right, Foot of Gork, gone. You just wasted all your money. Just like that. And that's one of the really powerful things about Foot of Gork. Same, it destroys turrets, bunkers, beacons, instantly, gone. So you don't go those things against some an orc that has a weird boy. But Fathom didn't even see that opportunity. And then, additionally, he went for Bulgrins. Probably doesn't quite understand the difference between Ogrins and Bulgrins. Bulgrins, as I say, at level 4 are a flat upgrade to Ogrins because their stats are just so much better. They'll wipe the floor with level 4 Ogrins. However, you're probably going to have level 2 Ogrins by the time you reach tier 3. And level 2 Ogrins compared to level 1 Bulgrins, that's not a flat upgrade. Bulgrins counter ranged because you can't knock them over, so they just keep charging forward, and they have passive damage resistance against ranged attacks, so they're really tanky against ranged. But because they don't have use your head, which is two sources of on-demand knockback, they're actually a lot worse in melee fights, even though they have slightly more DPS and HP than the Ogrins. The amount of damage output that you can put as an Ogrin squad when the enemy is on their ass thanks to use your head, as well as the amount of damage that you mitigate by knocking over the enemies for about six seconds is way more powerful than the extra damage and HP that a Bulgrin squad has at level one. So if you need to fight melee, keep Ogrins. Similarly, if you need the Ogrins to destroy a vehicle like a Death Dread, keep Ogrins, don't get Bulgrins, because Bulgrins can't, they don't get the speed boost when they use their ability, it's just AOE suppression. Really good at shutting down a big blob of enemy ranged units. Not very good against a death dread that you need to catch. Ogrins will use your head with a speed boost can catch this a lot easier. So yeah, just some things to consider there for Tarsonis. Hope you enjoyed that one, folks. This is all from your boy Torpid today for Sloppy Saturdays. I am signing out.